Hey guys, what's going on? It's Orful here, like always, but this time around we're going to be doing something different. MapleStory is always having a ton of 2x EXP events, but that doesn't necessarily mean you guys know where to train. So luckily for you, here's your one-stop express to get from level 1 to level 250. Before we begin, feel free to click the screen to skip to your character's current level to speed this process up. Also, in no way is this guide engraved in stone. Feel free to deviate as well as experiment if you so desire. And finally, if the character you are training has any kind of funding, whether through equipment, link skills, or even character cards, then I recommend going to the next training spot that is 8 to 13 levels above your character's level. This will maximize your EXP gains, granting you the most levels for your time. All of the locations and monsters can be typed into the world map search bar for quicker navigation and convenience. Alright, so you're level 1. This must be for one of the two reasons. Either A, you're new to MapleStory, in which case welcome to the MapleStory world, or B, you're leveling a good old pest healing skill mule. So the best thing for you to do from levels 1 to 10 is to follow your class specific tutorial slash storyline. This is arguably the fastest way to get from level 1 to 10, however, there is an alternative. Instead of doing the played out quest line, you can go ahead and fight yourself some red snails, blue snails, as well as Mano, the snail boss. All of which can be located in the same map. Alright, so you're fresh off the boat from the Maypole Islands with your first job advancement under your belt, and so you want to know what's next. Well, your best options are either Flaming Mixed Golems at Golems Temple 3, or Mushmom at Singing Mushroom Forest, Mushmom Forest Trail. Now that you're level 20, you do have a few more options. Of course, you could stay at Flaming Mixed Golems if you choose, or you could take your Mushmom fighting skills and test them against Blue Mushmom, or you could fight Street Lights, or you could even fight Curse Eyes. Congratulations! You are now a second job mapler, and with that great achievement comes even greater training spots. This one is Gold Beach, accessible by Pilot Irvin in the Six Path Crossway. I recommend staying between Gold Beach Soft Wave Beach 1 as well as Gold Beach Gentle Waves 2. These two maps seem to have the best spawn rate as well as great EXP. And you're gonna want to stay here until around level 50. Whoa, level 50 already? Third job is just around the corner, I bet you're excited. Where you're gonna want to go now until level 70 is Copper Drakes. Ah, uh, level 70. One of my favorite levels to reach. And the reason why? Romeo and Juliet PQ. Boy oh boy, is this PQ the Juliet to my Romeo, if you know what I mean. This PQ is absurdly overpowered. What you want to do is make sure you stay on the fourth stage and just continue to kill the mobs there until time kicks you out. Now, once you're level 80, you do have another option. You could train at Sand Rats slash Scorpions. This map is completely phenomenal. One of my favorite maps since way back, and it's still great to this day. Thank God. Or you could go ahead and Romeo and Juliet PQ. At level 90, again, you gain some new options, being Roids or my favorite Zackam Arms. Doing Zackam Arms at level 90 if you're strong enough, and make sure you bring all cures if you go. Just trust me will grant your character at least 8 levels. That's about 1 level per arm. Insane! And make sure you do it twice if you can do it. If you don't like those options, go ahead and Romeo and Juliet PQ. Wow, level 100. The fourth job advancement. Hmm, maybe you're not as bad as I thought. At level 100 to 140, you can go ahead and kill Zackam, or just do the Zackam arms. You can do Romeo and Juliet PQ still because, hey, when the hell does that get old? Or you can do Monster Park Extreme. Just talk to Spiegelit and you can get three free tickets to enter per day. Now that you're level 140, a lot of great options are open to you, especially if you love bossing like I do. Your first option is the infamous DIPQ, or Dimension Invasion PQ. It's a great PQ with a lot of different stages. However, it is a bit tough to kill the mobs alone if you're unfunded, so I would recommend going in with a party, especially if you can find yourself a bishop, but even if you want to solo, it's an amazing experience, although it might just be a little bit difficult, so make sure you pot up and go in there headstrong. 
If DIPQ is a little too challenging for you, you could go and head to Temple of Time and start those Ping Bean pre-quests because you're going to be training on Memory Monks. Great spawn, pretty spread out map, but it's a great place to train overall. And finally, if you're the type of person that rather boss instead of train, like myself, then there are a few bosses that you can do daily to help increase your EXP income for the day. The best bosses for you to fight starting from level 140 would be Hilla, Normal Zakum, or Chaos Zakum Arms, Normal Hontail, and Female Boss slash Anego. Please keep in mind if you are going to boss that it is recommended you have a little bit of funding, otherwise the boss runs could be very very lengthy. But hey, it's your call. These are the things you're going to want to be training and working on all the way until level 165. See you when you get there. Level 165, nice. Only 85 more levels to go. Unfortunately, once you hit level 165, your options become limited. It shouldn't be this way, but that's just the way it is. Stupid Nexon. But anyway, where you're going to want to train is at Stronghold 1st Drill Hall or Stronghold 2nd Drill Hall. Other than that, what you could do is, of course, your daily bosses. At this point, once you're level 165+, plus, you're going to want to be tackling all bosses possible, even the ones that you have to do pre-quests for, because every boss could help add experience, as well as provide you with some decent drops. And yes, you're going to want to be doing this until level 250. Although you do gain an option or two at level 210, but let's be honest, you're not making it to level 210. Well, 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 if it isn't the no-lifer that actually got to level 220. Well, now that you're here, you are going to be pretty disappointed, because the only addition to what you were training on for the past 50 levels is one of the new maps in the Black Heaven update called Black Heaven Maze 5. It has really good spawn rate, pretty condensed map, but it's mostly good if your character has a very mobile up jump skill, that would help a lot but they do do a lot of damage and it is a very tough place to train. It's pretty much something you'd go to to get a change of pace, change it up a little bit if you're tired of Stronghold. And don't worry guys, you do not have to do the Black Heaven pre-quest to get to this map. If you want to find out how to get to this map, please just go ahead and check the description to find a detailed written guide on how to get there step by step. Uh, but other than that, this is how you're going to get to level 250. Uh, this is the best possible guide I could think of. This, These are the maps that I use personally, and I'm a pretty good source to get training maps from since I have over maybe 25 classes, all above level 120. A lot of them are level 150 plus, so take it from me guys. Hopefully this guide has helped you become a successful leveler in MapleStory, and hopefully you guys can get to your goals. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a Soulful Production. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.